Lee has surrendered to Grant. And even now, as I write an eyewitness story for Leslie's Weekly, this Virginia countryside no longer trembles to the sound of guns. I have followed the war for five years, and the silence, the silence of peace is too much for my nerves. I am overcome with emotion. You better take a drink, Jim. You don't want to be overcome with emotion. You want your reading public to do the emoting. You're right. I got the shakes. Of course, it don't seem natural for a fact. No guns booming, no ambulances staggering down the road. Turn on the old hot tonic that made you famous, Jim. Today, the ambulances lie idle, says Jim Steed, the celebrated war correspondent. No longer is there precious cargo of shattered humanity. That's enough. You house effect. What's the matter? It's Lee. Lee riding home from the wars. You haven't surrendered to him, have you, General? You haven't quit fighting them, have you, sir? No, no. We're just going home to plant a crop. Then come back and fight them some more, ain't we, General? Oh, we ain't going home. We ain't just playing a trick on them blue coats, ain't we, General? What's your name, Lieutenant? Cleve Blunt, sir. Where's your home? Hopewell, sir. In the Bull Run Mountain country. Then you must be Miss Patty Blunt's boy. Oh, yes, sir. Well, you go home, Lieutenant. And tell your mother you must lay down your arms now and return to your books. But I want to go on fighting, General, until we beat them. Peace hath her victories no less than war. There's an old hymn which says, chance and change are busy ever. Man decays, but ages move. We must move with the ages, Cleve. There can be no standing still. Weekly. I heard the general tell you to go to college. Aren't you going to take his advice? I've never done anything but fight since I was 16. I couldn't stop it now if I tried. Who is in charge here? You must place yourself at my disposal for a few minutes. It is most urgent. I am an accredited military observer, and I wish to send my dispatch through our embassy in Washington to the Count von Bismarck in Berlin. You ain't accredited to Frank Leslie, are you? Leslie, bah. I wish to send my dispatch to the Count von Bismarck, do you understand? The Count von Bismarck... It's just a herring to me. Hello, Count. Ah, Herr Steed, you must help me. The Count von Bismarck is waiting for my report. I wish to point out the mistakes your General Lee has made. Sure, you can point out Lee's mistakes. But only a great man like Lee yonder can point out the mistakes that'll be made after the guns are silent. Guns are never silent, Herr Steed. Guns are wisdom. Guns are love to you, Prussians. Go ahead and send it. She's really charming. Yes, I saw her in Vienna. Colonel. It was a pleasure, Your Excellency. Goodbye. 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 There's old Steed. A war horse in white tie and tails. Steed, old boy. Hello, Colonel. Hello. Linus, this is Mr. Steed, with whom I had the pleasure of reporting the war between the states. My fiancée. 
Miss Thorndyke. How do you do? An American war correspondent in Berlin. Well, we're like vultures, lady. We gather around and wait for the lions to die. You don't think the Prussian lion's going to die? No, but I think the Austrian lion's going to be pretty badly mauled. Shh, Jim, we're in Berlin. I'm sure Mr. Steed isn't here to report a war. Like everybody else, he's here to throw himself at the feet of the Viennese ballerina. Now, what chance would I have against an Austrian archduke? Jim, oh, I'm His Majesty's military attaché. We don't talk about such things. Pardon me. Yeah. Jim, I have waited a whole hour for you. I had a cable from New York, a very important assignment. <laughs> My German teacher. Oh, yes. Is it true that that dancer hopes to marry the Austrian prince? Uh, every woman hopes to become a princess. Shh, pardon me. Yes. Jim. No scenes, please. I promise you. You promise? Yes, I'll be there. Now beat it. Please. Another German teacher? No, she gives me lessons, uh, piano. Piano? Oh. Uh, about the ballerina, wasn't she asked by the Prussian government to dance tonight? You know, a sort of compliment to the Royal House of Vienna? No bones broken? <laughs> I read a perfectly horrid article about her in one of those awful mudslinging American weeklies. Liars! Well, I did read it. I'm flattered. I wrote it. Oh. <laughs> but she was probably thrown out of Vienna. Well, they didn't throw her far enough. I wish she'd landed in New York. Uh oh that's the bell for the overture. May I have some champagne, please? I'd like a word with the American Bluebeard. I'll join you. Very well, dear. I'll see you later. Yes. Now, look here. Don't you stick your inquisitive American nose into high politics. Well, I may get a punch in the nose before the night's over, but I think I'll be able to hit back sooner or later. Now, when you're thrown in jail, give me a signal. I have connections. Send me a file and a loaf of bread, old boy. <laughs> Beautiful. She's worth over campaign. Four years in America, I hardly know how to begin a European campaign. The opening moves are always the same. Flowers and champagne. <laughs> Love is like war. First a demonstration of friendliness to put your opponent at ease. The lady has access to the royal family in Vienna. In fact, one of the Habsburg may think more of her than he does of his emperor. Remember me, von Bolen? Got your dispatch off after Appomattox. You are forcing yourself upon the Count von Bismarck. Introduce me, Count. Sorry in the audience, just thought I'd ask you to give me a little information that I need. This man is presuming upon a chance acquaintance. Get out. Get out before I have you thrown out. Now, look, Count, is that any way to treat an American war correspondent? Yes, Harry. An old comrade in arms. I very much admire the valley campaigns of the American General Jackson. I say, I could talk to you about old Stonewall all night. Hardly tonight. Could we be of any service to you in Berlin, Steve? You sure could, Count von Bismarck. You could help me score a beat on the world if you'll tell me the day you're going to make war on Austria. So? Such a frontry should receive a slap across the face. Of course, Steve, if our Austrian cousins allied themselves with France, 
must protect the fatherland. That's just what I thought, sir. Hope you've excused the interruption. I have not. He's irritable tonight. It is always so when one is assigned to a delicate test. Good luck to you, gentlemen. Now you see how simple and honest our great Iron Chancellor is. Imagine breaking in on your General Grant that way. What would he have done to you? He always gave me a cigar and then told me the truth. The ladies were admiring your flowers, Herr Graf. <laughs> Ja. Huh? Oh, uh, from His Excellency to Count von Bismarck. Ah, ja, gnädige Herr. Prussian beast, dare I? Every man disrobes me. I'd say, ma'am, there isn't much to disrobe. Sophie, this gentleman? He's from His Excellency the Count von Bismarck. From that vulture in the box. He's got me wrong, ma'am. I'm from Frank Leslie's Weekly. From what? Frank Leslie's Weekly. <laughs> Tis a very bad likeness of me. Look, are my shoulders made of iron? No, ma'am. I'd say they were made of butter and sugar. Which will never be at Count Bismarck's feast. I'm sure of that, ma'am. But the other one in the box... Now, I'd like to interest you in a little business proposition. I came back here because I happened to overhear a conversation about you between Count von Bismarck and Count von Bolin. I happened to overhear it because I make it my business to eavesdrop. I am uninterested in their opinion of me. I'll play a little game with you. If you can find out from von Bolin just when Prussia expects to make war against Austria, I will undertake to forward your messages back to Vienna. You'll undertake it. Can I not write to my prince? Not if you're as shrewd as you look. The day that you begin to receive von Bolin's attentions, that day you will be under surveillance. But I am not going to receive his attentions. But that's what I want to urge you to do, to have supper in his rooms, to have possibly a great amount of curiosity as to the contents of his bureau or his desk or his letter file. You could get more places that way in a war than General Grant could in a full dress uniform. In whose pay are you? Has it ever occurred to you, Salome, that we're all instruments of divine providence? I'm a member of a despised tribe, a newspaper man, and you're eating your heart out because you can never be a Habsburg princess. Now, suppose we could unmask that tiger Bismarck when he attempts to strike in the spring, show that it is cool, deliberate murder. To my mind, that's a finer thing to do for your prince and your country than any mere queen could do. It is a queenly thing, O oh Salome, to do good and be evil spoken of. And Sophie, see who knocks. It is fate knocking, Salome. Anna Maria, it gives to me great pleasure to present His Excellency Count von Bolen of the Prussian General Staff. Mars, making a customary homage to Venus. It would do me great honor, Gnadius Fräulein to order supper for us at the Bristol. Of course, in the great dining room. Oh, it is such a large room. I am frightened by such great beauty, or I would ask to order supper in your room. My rooms are stuffy. I would hardly say in my room. An actress in your rooms? Yes, that would be frowned upon by the chief of the Prussian general staff. I thank you for the lovely flowers. They are exquisite. Sophie, take care of these. What wine will you choose? I love the wine of Hungary, the Tokai. And the temperature? The temperature of your rooms. Oh, uh... 
tells you Americans all the secrets of our European wars. A little bird? You military attaches never see the woods for the trees. Trees, a lovely sapling there, what? Beside a sturdy Prussian oak. Say, Steve, you're quite a gay young dog beneath your rugged exterior, aren't you? Do you mind? Not at all, old boy. If you dropped a bit of do for me, I'd have read it first and asked your pardon later. Now, in the matter of that small wager on Bismarck's intentions towards Austria... I never bet on a sure thing, Colonel. You know, Colonel, with your rank and my brains, we could run this war. My dear fellow, what war? The one that starts tomorrow? I give you top marks. Time's a wasting, Colonel. I must send my dispatch to Leslie's Weekly. And I request the pleasure of your company, my dear Henderson, for the opening of the war between Prussia and Austria tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Tried that outflanking maneuver on old Stonewall Jackson. They'd lose their pants before nightfall. Then I can assure you they're going to lose them. These Prussians have learned more from Stonewall Jackson than Frederick the Great ever taught them. We'd better get out of here. What? Gee, Hossafat, brother. What a deluxe war you Austrians fight. Well, I guess the least I can do is take your name and let your folks know you didn't suffer. life can hang in the balance on this little perfume scale. You are wounded, Hastid. Only a bad fall from a horse, which conveniently places you in a position to loot the dead. <laughs> Feldwebel! The threads run together, eh? The pattern on the broad loom of intelligence begins to take shape. You were with him. There was confusion in retreat. I was thrown here by him. A packet of letters which you have hidden under the stone. You were reading them? Yes. And you were about to steal the locket? I was about to return it to someone. You must permit me to do that for you. You see, I'm going to have you shot as a battlefield ghoul. 
Perhaps we should let the Feldwebel return them. You see, when you turn those letters over to your chief of staff up there, he'll have you shot for revealing military secrets to a lady who's made a fool of you. A life for a life. Two lies for your one. Naturally, I would not hurt her. I am unfortunate enough to love her. Feldwebel! Nehmen Sie den Herr Stiel, wo er hingehen will. Jawohl, Herr Graf. I am giving you safe conduct and escort. Be good enough to tell him where you wish to go. Oh, Count. Haven't you forgotten something, Count? The lady's letters. Or shall I call them the attention of your chief of staff? Liebchen, the American is right. You can't remain in Vienna. The Prussians will enter the city tomorrow. We have no time to stand on manners now. He will go to Paris. The Prussians will be there next year. You ought to know that better than I do. If only Kurt had you supplant him. The plans I... I stole for his sake. You should be proud of him. He lost a war, lost his life rather than let anyone know that the girl he loved had placed herself in a position to loot the rooms of a Prussian officer. Yes, a man could love you that much. And now this Prussian will hunt me to the ends of the earth. Fräulein, he is here. Look, I have enough money to take us on the new steam packet from Trieste to Galveston. We have Professor Max here to arrange your music, then we'll dance our way across the Overland stage route to San Francisco. Liebchen. I'm not too old to be a pioneer. You may present His Excellency in the Fraulein's sitting room in two minutes, Sophia. Do as I say, Sophie. Don't you see? San Francisco is made for you. You think Paris or Vienna is profligate? You should see those nabobs on the Gold Coast. But it would all be too new. New? San Francisco? Why, it's a chapter out of the Arabian Nights. We'll descend on the Golden Gate like a pack of wolves on a sheepfold. This is one time a reporter would rather create a great story than write one. Look, I got you into this, and I'll get you out of it. You're going to stand here, a portrait of a faithless lady waiting for the big reconciliation. In the meantime, Uncle Jim, good old Uncle Jim, will take up his position back of the door. He'll come in, strike an attitude, shout that he's been hornswoggled, and that's when you blow out the lamp. Music, Professor. Yes? All along, you were acting, giving another of your great performances. You tricked me into loving you, and that I cannot for never forget. thriving community of Drinkman Wells, where our Viennese lily will bloom in the desert or we'll all die of thirst. Wells. Oh, look, Max. Madame Europe's. That is 
That's what Jim would call a hunch, yeah? That's right. Well, she might welcome show folks. She used to be on the stage herself until her arches fell. The place is right across the street. Thanks. the best that Madame Europe can afford, and a lot of it. European cuisine, Spanish wines, French beds, Bechstein Grand for our professor here to play, and a stage for a gorina. Hmm. Show folks, huh? Step right in. Well, you've got to excuse this reception. We've been having a little trouble down here in Brickman Wells. Kind of trouble. Bandit trouble. Stagecoach Cleave, he calls himself. He blows up strong boxes with a newfangled explosion called nitrokerosene. Nobody cares about a little regular banditry, but when it comes right down to using these unorthodox methods, it makes the boys around town mighty sore. Well, maybe we have just what this town needs, a good rousing show. And when it comes to explosion liquor, this little lady is dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> well, she don't look to me like she could explode no better than a penny firecracker right now. Forgive me if I don't live up to his description. But the trip was very long. It's so hot. <laughs> yeah. Well, go on, get your duds. We're right about the hunch. It won't be long. Madame Yorov, you are indeed an oasis. Well, I've been called a lot of things, but that's a new one on me. <laughs> about 10 years ago. And our manager, oh, he was a wonderful artist. Only he could never resist a card game. One day he thought he saw a sanded ace up a gambler's sleeve and he started to draw on a two-gun man. We buried him in Boot Hill with a row of crystal clear whiskey bottles marking his grave. Do you mean to say there's a troop still kicking around this outpost? What's left of them? And our heavy. He was the greatest Simon Legree that ever cracked a whip. He's shaken New Orleans fizzes in the Red Dog Saloon. By the way, what play do you aim to do? Max, that's your department. A pantomime. Why not... Why not the Sleeping Beauty? Uh-uh, not here. They don't like him sleeping. I know something that'll wake him up. Salome. Salome? Does she dance that good? That good. <laughs> Drinkman Wells will remember it forever. Figure needing some peas in there, Doby. <laughs> <laughs>
San Francisco in style. Where is Salome coming on? But these men, they're not like any I've ever met. Look, honey, when you dance, a man's a man in a checkered shirt and chewing tobacco, or a gentleman in white tie and tails. Oh, Jim, you're just what I need. When we get the big money, how about making that a permanent deal? Are you proposing to me? This isn't just a case of stage fright. I've been proposing to you since the first time I saw you. Uh oh, get ready for action. seats. Rise and shine. Reach for it and keep reaching. Go ahead, boys. Max, it's Kurt come to life. You're a low-down critter stagecoach. Not only robbing, but busting up the show. Yeah, too bad, Sheriff. Mighty nice of you getting the folks together, though, and throwing the guns in the back to collect an easier. I remember you. You're Cleve Blunt. You spoke to General Lee after Appomattox. It's stagecoach Cleve now. I'm still fighting. I'll trouble you for that cash box, mister. Quite through robbing these poor people, I would like to go on with my dance. That's what they came here for and paid for. Go ahead, lady, dance. 
Sit down, boys. Sorry to have interrupted your fun, but keep your hands up. Go ahead and play, Max. Bravo, that was wonderful. I thought the American bandit was romantic, like the desert. Not a low common thief sneaking in to rob poor defenseless people. Oh. All right, boys, let's go. Steady. Come on, boys, let's get going. It was wonderful of you dancing for them. Yeah, yeah, but how are we going to get to San Francisco? <laughs> looks like we ain't. Looks like Brickman Wells has got a permanent theater, and looks like I got a lot of permanent non-paying guests. Yeah. romantic enough for you? Wasn't that why you looked at me the way you did? Why you danced for me? No, you don't understand. You reminded me of someone else. 
And while I was dancing, I seemed to be alive again. Almost happy once more. Where is he now? He's... He's dead. I'm sorry. He was killed in a war. Were you a soldier, too? Yes, I was a Confederate soldier. Under General Lee. Then I don't understand why you are a bandit now. The fruits of defeat. Over the world, nursing their scars, sit the old soldiers broke in the wars. You have been broken in the wars? Yes, ma'am. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yes, we hanged our harps upon the willows, and we wept when we remembered Zion. Yes, that is a beautiful psalm. And those who carried us away captive required of us a song. What do your words say? They tell about a Christmas tree. A Christmas tree with lights and snow. And the colored folks rolling the Christmas log into the hall. Candied apples, and strings of popcorn, and frosted cookies. You see, you're not a bandit, really. Just someone who has lost his faith for a little time. How can one have faith when there's nothing? And no one. But there is, if you have faith. I want some of you men to come with me. You know this part of the country better than I do. We can't leave this to the sheriff and his posse alone. We've all got to join in the search. Now then, how many of you men? Look. <laughs> And this is ours, Tim. Hey, folks, come back! The miracle has happened! Look! Are you all right? Yes, Jim, don't worry. But, Liebchen, you were kidnapped and in danger. And now you say, don't worry. Well, she's right. We'll soon be getting out of here. Then we'll win over all the day bobs on the Gold Coast. And when the sheriff gets back, we will tell him that stagecoach Cleve will never trouble him again. Because he's going away with us, too. With us? It's a free country, Steed. But it's sort of wild up there, and a lady needs protection. Looks like you're going to have some competition. Turn to you. How about it, boys? A cheer for the little lady. <laughs> oh, thank you. Never in my whole life will I forget the town of. The town of. The town of. Say, wait a minute. Henceforth, this town will no longer hide its fame under the prosaic appellation of Drinkman Wells. From now on, this town will be known as Salome, where she danced. <laughs> I'm so glad we followed Hellsteed's advice and came to San Francisco. It's filled with the haunting music of a city out of the Arabian Nights. Now, if we could only find the key that unlocks the golden gate. <laughs> oh, dear, it's dear. You're gonna look swell draped in this. All ready for the grand entrance. All you need now is a set of door fancy, the plush curtains, the grand staircase, and then... Ta-da! Bravo, bravo! <laughs> oh, I wish Cleve would hurry back. I'm so excited and nervous. It feels just like an opening night. I hope I don't forget my lines. 
Well, I never forgot my lines, but I do remember a most embarrassing moment when I did forget my... Uh-uh. Madame Europe. <laughs> Tiara, I was about to say... You won't have any opening night to worry about unless we can find an angel. Why, this town is filthy with gold. Oh, so far, we've managed to remain surprisingly clean. But I've just been reading about a very likely prospect. San Francisco's most fabulous nabob, Colonel Ivan Dimitrioff. We may as well start at the top. The paper's full of his exploits. Dimitrioff entertains royalty. Dimitrioff buys gold mine. Dimitrioff gives a fortune to charity, and so on. Is that his picture? That's him, all right. Now all we have to do is to interest him in our own little charitable organization. <laughs> Just a touch of pecan in my vodka, please. I keep forgetting, Colonel. And you're the richest neighbor on the Gold Coast, Colonel. Yes, I'm one malefactor who makes no attempt to conceal his enormous wealth. Then maybe you'd like to buy this egret I caught in the Malay State. It's a very rare specimen. Yes, I believe it to be Adea Sumatrana. While the divine apparition over there is wearing nothing better than Adea Pupurea, the common heron of Europe, and to be had for a few pennies in any parish shop. It's yours for... Uh... Fifteen hundred dollars. My good fellow, I consider that a bargain. Here are two thousand dollars. I'm afraid I haven't got... Never mind, you may keep the change. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, will you do me the honor of telling me the name of the lady who has just entered? Which lady, sir? Is there more than one? The lady, sir, is the celebrated Viennese dancer who is said to have provoked the recent war between Prussia and Austria. She has suffered deeply. Her suffering will soon be at an end. Oh, 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 Don't. I'm not hurt. We've hooked him. I ask your pardon, but Mademoiselle is far too genuine to be wearing false feathers. The tropics of the Indian seas have labored a million years to find plumage worthy of your grace. I hate gun smoke. Shall we go? Is it not beautiful? Hmm. He looks like he needs a dose of calomel to me. Six bits I'd have plugged at Dimitrioff. Oh, no, Cleve. Russians are a very demonstrative people. And they are also very generous. Now, after it is all over and he has uh, built a theater for me, this Colonel Dimitri will laugh at Jim's these little trick. That's what I don't like, this trick. You've seen enough trouble. You've probably caused enough trouble. Cleve. Oh, I don't want to hurt you, Salome. I've had trouble, too, but the theater's no place to start life again. You don't belong here. Why, this is all very fine. It is like Paris, a little. You were saying you'd do anything if I'd go straight. Yes, anything. Then come home with me, to Virginia. I want to take you out of all this. None of this is any good. None of it. You know it. Oh, Cleve. Yes? Картина от господина Дмитриева. Поставь здесь. What in tarnation? What a city! Russian chasseurs, a Rembrandt. It is just like Arabian Nights. Max, 
Max! What is it? What has happened? Max, look, look! Himmel, it's a Rembrandt. Rembrandt himself. And it's authentic. Yes, all of life, all of art, all of sorrow. So he got it. Got it? Sure, the Colonel bought the Rembrandt. Little present for you. A dirty old bar fly with a tam o' shanter? Say, how much is a thing like that worth? Probably $50,000. Uh-oh. See what he's got to say. The old guy in the picture? He says he could sure do with a drink. So could I. The Colonel wants us all to do him the honor of coming to dinner. Swell. We need him out of house and home. River of blue. Only the beginning. Deep and so grand and gilded a cage. Why, you talk just like my granddaddy. And was he from China, laddie? No, sir, he was from Scotland. Oh, Scotland. Where I took my medical degree and learned. And here I am, a practicing metaphysician at the court of this fabulous man, Dimitriov. I'm so thrilled. Surely I must be home in Vienna. Colonel Dimitri, you are a magician. Mademoiselle Anna Maria, it is a privilege to welcome the great artist. My dear, you were enchanting. I wish to put you at your ease, Mademoiselle, by saying that a city which has thrown itself at the feet of Lola Montez has capitulated without firing a shot. You are very kind. <laughs> In opera, it is a tragedy that the voice grows in proportion to the bust. But with this slender creature, <laughs> multum in parvo. Oh, how marvelous is your perspicacity. I can readily see that you are a woman of discernment, as the Greeks so aptly put it. Just a moment, Plato. I knew that wrapper was genuine Sumatra. My dear. And so in the restaurant, I could not possibly exchange shots with your Captain Blunt. Indeed, I am grateful to him. Yes, my nephew Captain Blunt's a fine lad. And where did the lady meet him? 
Why, uh... Oh, he was Confederate attaché to the Habsburg court in Vienna. And uh, when I was forced to leave my country, Captain Blount was good enough you to... You see, act. she's so charming that when she babbles your press agent make-believe, she almost makes me believe it. This ex-bandit will never be prosecuted as long as he has me for a friend. Ex-bandit? Why, Colonel, you must be misinformed. Now, now, Mr. Steed. You see, Dr. Ling keeps me very well informed. What do you propose to do? The boy befriended us, and the last dollar I have is at his service. Exactly, the last dollar. I propose to befriend him. I've already taken up the matter with the Butterfield stage line. You're all right, Colonel. I can't tell you how happy this makes me. Then come, my dear. Let's have champagne and celebrate. Champagne, please. Yes, sir. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's all drink a toast to beautiful Anna Maria. Her star is in ascendance. May it ever shine with increasing brilliance. The young lassie is not for you. Demetria has seen her, and he will be bound to have her. My Scotch ancestry won't allow me to give up easily. I'm greatly disturbed. Look, we have a lovely woman, temperamental and willful, who sees in her present cavalier the image of one she once loved. Now, until his future is settled, how can I plan her life? How can I build a great theater? How can I transplant that genius of the ballet into the harsh soil of the new world? Well, if you could have Cleve pardon and given a post to shotgun messenger on the Butterfield line, it'd go a long way toward clearing the air. Yes, why not have him pardoned and return to Virginia? Because he wouldn't agree to go. Look. Yes, I can well see why he wants to stay where he is. You're growing rather jealous of him, Colonel Dimitrov. My good friend, we need the wisdom of the East. I am aware of the dilemma. I was about to suggest that our young man be given a post on the line between Fresno and San Francisco. That will still not remove him from the scene. To do that would destroy your chances forever, Colonel. For one lover to send another to a far country? My man, he'd commit the sin of King David in the Old Testament. But to give the young man a post where he was neither near nor far would be the end of mystery and romance. My dear Dr. Ling, you're wonderful. The next item on the agenda of our consular war is uh, how to get rid of Major Steed there. Hey, any suggestions, Major? <laughs> well, Dr. Ling, if your information is correct and von Bolin is on his way here, it may be that he will perform that duty for you. Alas, Major Steed, business before pleasure. And I claim the honor of handling that Prussian in my own way. It will require the utmost alertness and vigilance on all our parts to protect our Anna Maria. In spying on their intrigues, she has incurred the highest penalty. To revenge her conceit is without mercy. And the blood of this girl is the only thing that will restore the glory of the Count von Bolen. I knew Dr. Ling would find a solution. Well, I hope it works. I'm anxious to get started with the show. You must remember, Jack. Well, never have I seen such conspirators. You would think they'd been planning a hold-up instead of a ballet. I never look like that when I plan my hold-ups. Oh, but that is all over now. Yes. I've arranged a full pardon for your boyish escapades. Well, that's mighty nice of you, Colonel. I've also arranged a post for you as shotgun messenger on the very same stagecoach as you used to rob. You have, eh? Indeed, I have. You think I'll now begin to shoot my old friends? I'm not ready to turn my coat yet. I'd rather go back to robbing. Well, gentlemen, you must think of some other way to take him from me. Lassie. I trust you believe in me as a friend. Oh, dear Dr. Ling, I cherish your friendship greatly. Your teachings have cleared my mind of many doubts and fears. And then I must endeavor to make you see clearly 
why it is sometimes better that a wise woman adapt herself to circumstances as water shapes itself to the vessel that contains it. Never try to reform the choice of a lady's heart, gentlemen, unless you can succeed in making her believe that she has been the instrument of this reformation. Well, that reformation shouldn't be difficult. It's your wisdom and Dimitrios' generosity. And the lady's talent. How'd you get word to me? We well, heard the Butterfield Line was going to grant you a pardon at the request of the Russian government. What's the joke? Chinese junk has dropped anchor off there. She's loaded with soak and jade. Not one of her crew last night. We had a few drinks together. He's coming in on a deal with us. We're going to knock it off and sail her to Panama. Piracy on the high seas. Ain't that something? Yeah. Yeah, that's something. We want you in on it. What's holding us? Nothing. We got it all planned. Come on, boys. I'll go below and bring up the captain. You stay here and take care of the crew. Remember, no killing. Don't worry. We'll keep him alive to sail the ship. saintly to kill. Come in, laddie. And repent your sinful ways. Dr. Lee. You heard me tell you to get him up. Yes. I'll get them up. I know. Would you rob me, laddie? I have here a poem written by a man 2,000 years ago in praise of a peach tree which bloomed in his garden. And who would rob the peach tree of his blossoms, laddie? The wind does that every spring. You're going to lead me to the captain of this ship. He's right behind you. A queer contraption, the crossbow, laddie. But it strikes a blow that kills as dead as a bullet. What's coming off you? Where are Jed and my friend? Look through the porthole, laddie. Frame up. And you're sorry? No, I'm not sorry. Each of your friends has been freed and told to mend his ways. What way are you going, laddie? What way have I ever taken but the wrong way? Whenever I stood before two roads, I took the wrong one. You were offered the right one, laddie. To turn against my old friends? The right road is always the hard one. When a man is redeemed, when he begins again, it is never the length of the road that dismays him. No. It is the thought of leaving the old comrades in arms. The thought of going it alone along the bitter path of peace. For he had been bred for war and taught to fight and taught nothing else. Yes, that's it. Nothing but fighting since I was 16. But it is a fine thing, Larry, to fight for the right. What is the right? What a true man believes in. I believe in nothing. 
Not even in Salome? Yes, I believe in her. Dr. Ling, I... So you're part of it, too? Yes. Are you angry? No. Nothing matters when I'm with you. No wonder men would die for you. I would rather a man lived. For you? For himself. Cleve, will you promise I to... I promise to love you all of my life. I could remember you always as you are right now. This is part of me. Maybe it will help you. Whatever the way of youth, give them beauty and you can keep your wisdom. Boy, driving a team like this makes me homesick for Virginia. Yeah, blue smoke crawling around the tobacco barns. I haven't thought of anything else for six months. Still, a fresh air is better than sitting in jail. Yeah, real educational, too. Come on, boys. Here we go. See the dude in the blue coat? Ain't no dude. That's a killing gentleman if I ever saw one. Maybe. Asked me was I sure we'd get to San Francisco in time for... Time for what? Said he wants to be sure he sees Salome on the opening night. Oh, he did, did he? Yeah. I guess a famous dancer that way. Dudes flock from everywhere. Killer, huh? Ladies and gentlemen of the company, Mr. Steed wants to speak to you. Folks, it's four in the morning and we open tonight. When it's over, we will have the cream of San Francisco throwing their diamonds on the stage. You have all been wonderful through these six weeks of rehearsal. I'm sorry we've had to keep you so late. I know you're all tired, so go straight home and get some rest. Good night, everybody. Good night, Steve. As soon as you've changed, I'll be glad to take you to your hotel. Thank you, Jim, but I want to stay and rehearse a few pirouettes I'm not sure of. But, Liebchen, this is foolish. You have done enough. 
You need your rest. No, no, Max, don't argue. You know where to begin. Don't worry, Jim. Max will take me home. Right. Also. So, you are surprised? Pleasantly, I hope. Evidently, your clever friends did not expect me so soon. You have no hold on me here. I have come from Washington. Through our influence, the diplomatic difficulties have been cleared. You are returning with me to Berlin. She is not a subject of the Prussian king. And Washington does not send back political refugees. Yes, that is what America is made of. The homeless ones, with talent and courage. This is not a political matter. It is a more serious offense. I have powerful friends who can have you thrown out of this city. If your Russian attempts to interfere, the Tsar will recall him to St. Petersburg. Dr. Schultz, our counsel, has already offered Colonel Dimitrov the alternative of a recall. Kleines Liebchen, how could you have betrayed me after we have been so close? You gave me every reason to believe I did not displease you. And even now, you need not return to Berlin if you will come away with me. I will give you everything that you have here, with your Russian or this hair steed. Well, you have my proposal. You must make the decision. The decision is that you leave here and go back where you came from, alone. Please, he was Never trying. mind, I've heard enough. When you're ready, I'll see you safely home. Come, Lipke. Anna. I will be in the audience tonight, leading your claque. Get out. Another member of the club. Well, I don't blame you. Many men love her. Where I come from, we defend a lady's name. Oh, please, please, darling, please. Go in there. Come, Liebchen, it's best. I'll get rid of your hand. Only a coward would take advantage of an unarmed opponent. You are right. She is worth fighting for. But I cannot cross swords with a mere boy. Don't worry. We had a French fencing master in our regiment. All right. We will see how much you remember. would make a good student of the sword. Now let us see if you remember the second repost from a high thrust. Oh, Max, Max, we must stop them. What can we do? So, you got that fun in your lesson. That is good. If you are as accomplished in your lovemaking, you are indeed a rival. Well, you're gone, you won't have a rival.
my fault. I will swear that I killed him. And we'll face it together. When I walk out of here, rid myself of you, I'm going back where I belong. No, no, Cleve. I'm going back to Virginia with you. No, not Virginia. I'm going back to the road. Quixote you were telling me about? Yeah. Looks like he's just been thrown out of his castle. Maybe he needs a drink, huh? Get out. What's wrong, Cleve? I had to kill a man. Are there any witnesses? Yeah, a girl. Can you trust her? I don't want to. Now you're coming to your senses. Looks like it's a case of my head ain't hurt, but my heart's plumb broke, huh? Yeah, that's what it amounts to. How soon will the news get out? Should be out right now. I gotta get away. The Butterfield coach will be standing in the stables right now, waiting for the driver to take her out on the morning run to Fresno. You want to hold her up? No, steal her out. Take her as far as she'll go. Towards where? Virginia. Lovely bonnet. Take it off. I will buy you a better one tomorrow. I will not be here tomorrow. I'm going to follow Cleve. He's in the stagecoach, far away. You can't stop me. Can't I? Try and hire a carriage. Dimitriov, you've always been so generous. Surely now when Cleve is wounded, hunted, lost. Not badly wounded. Hunted, yes. But lost? Don't worry. I shall find him. I knew you'd find him and bring him back to me. I shall find him for you. After you have conquered San Francisco tonight with all your fire and beauty. Do you think I'd go before those footlights again? Never. Liebchen, how can you leave us on an opening night? I saw the corpse, Colonel. What a handsome man he must have been. Madam Europe, you will help me find Cleve. My dear, it's just another bad penny. Why don't you rest before you dance? I can't dance. Now look here, dearie. I went on in Vicksburg, 16 calls after the final curtain, and there was my husband dead beneath the Subrex dressing table. No one can keep me here. I'll take to the road. I'll sing in every dance hall, in every saloon until I find Cleve. You'll sing here tonight, and you'll dance too. Or I'll make Cleve dance for you. But I'll make him dance on the end of a rope. Max, nothing can change my decision. Anna, every woman has weapons she must employ in her battle against the world. You're a good woman, Salome. If you can make this audience throw itself at your feet tonight, you'll be a great woman. Jim, if I were to follow you for the rest of my life, I should wish to be a great woman. But there's another way I must take, and it means more to me than my career. If Cleve will only read what is in my heart, he will know and be there waiting. Yes, to lead you out of my life and out of your world, our world. We're both part of the same pattern, each important to the other. I'm sorry, Jim, but I shall never dance again. She was always a great artist, but above all, a woman. Dr. Lee, 
You will find Cleve for me. Be patient, child. Fate in the form of three must not delay. Right now, we got more important use for it. I'll stop that Russian. Colonel, it looks like they've got to stop. Sheriff, you give up too easily. Move on. Ah! Just ahead is the horseshoe turn. The road doubles back and runs parallel with this ridge. That gives me an idea. Your gun ready. Stop! You're under arrest! Stop! I say I blame you, Colonel. Presumptuous idiot. You killed that Russian just to gain favor with a woman I love. You can have her. Let's go, sir. Just a minute, sir. I don't think you've played this thing according to Hoyle, Colonel. Do not blame me, Mr. Steve, for what I do. Come on, Terry. I hope you know what you're doing, Colonel. I've always been a great lover of beauty. I love the beauty of cities, of lights underwater, of beautiful women. Get in there. When a man loves a woman half his age, there must be three great qualities in this love. Generosity, tenderness, and generosity. You see, Mr. Steed, I also love a beautiful ending. Key to the handcuffs. Where did you tell him to go? Virginia. 